Well, at least the new Amazon Lord of the Rings series will have one advantage, namely that many will reread the good old books by J.R.R. Tolkien in order to cleanse their minds from this new age cash grab, which, let's be honest, this series is most likely going to be. And when revisiting the old books, now through the eyes of someone who is fascinated with late Roman history, I did notice quite some fascinating similarities between the kingdoms of the Numenorians in Tolkien's wonderful legendarium, Arnor and Gondor, and the western and eastern Roman empires of our own world. Might Tolkien have been inspired by the Roman Empire? A wonderful modern cinema, first Star Trek was vandalized and turned from an intelligent show from intelligent people for intelligent people into a degenerate action spectacle where even average people feel insulted by the sheer low degree of complexity, a moral vacuum and extreme nihilism, but of course stuffed to a hilarious extent with the favorite modern day ideology of Hollywood. And Star Wars was of course next and now Disney is pumping out one abysmal storyline that doesn't make any sense whatsoever after another and the masses, almost like in the good old days of Panem et Kirkenses, consume, consume and consume even more. So we knew that it was only a matter of time until the world of Tolkien would be vandalized next. And lo and behold, the time indeed seems to have arrived, as the trailers do not bode well for a coherent and good storyline that respects the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. Well, for me at least, there is one good thing that comes out of the degeneracy of modern day movies and series, namely that they make me want to re-watch the old series the old movies and reread the wonderful old works of Tolkien in order to cleanse my mind from this utter garbage. But now something strange happened when rereading the Silmarillion, which I had already read I forgot how many times. In Tolkien's work, the Numenorians play an important role. This is a branch of humans that were blessed with an unusually long lifespan by the angelic beings of Middle-earth, the Valar and those Numenorians inhabited their island of Numenor or Atelante, which of course is directly related to our mythology of Atlantis. Now when this island was destroyed by the wrath of Eru Iluvatar, the main god of Tolkien's legendarium himself, as a punishment for the Numenorians because they had turned evil, a small remnant of the Numenorians that had remained friendly established new kingdoms in Middle-earth. These so-called faithful Numenorians established two kingdoms, a northwestern one called Anor and a southeastern one called Gondor. The Numenorians had superior technology and organization as compared to the surrounding mostly primitive tribes and creatures and thus were able to persist for many years. But at some point the Northwestern Kingdom started to succumb to civil wars and thus split into multiple parts. In addition, it was subjected to constant attacks from a powerful enemy, namely the armies of the Witch King of Angmar. And so under constant attacks and due to civil wars, this northwestern empire of Anor fell at some point. But the southeastern empire of Gondor persisted and survived for many more years. But Gondor had to endure many attacks from all sides, from the enemies who were under command of the Dark Lord Sauron, from the south, from the east and from the northeast. And so after hundreds of years, even this realm was now only a shadow of its former self. Many of the old cities had been captured by the enemy and there was only one last bulwark standing against the forces of the east, namely the fortress city of Minas Tirith. Does this sound familiar to you? Well, any friend of Roman history will instantly notice some fascinating similarities here. But before we get to that, please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting our work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. And I would like to thank our new Sol Invictus supporter, Vas the Attendant. Thank you so much, Vas, for your amazing and generous support. This channel wouldn't be possible without people like you. 
And we have two new Kaisar supporters, Steven Colonna and Drone Age Rage. Thank you so much, Steven Colonna and Drone Age Rage, for your support. I thank each and every one of you who is supporting this channel. I hope Majorian would be proud. Gratias Tibiago Amiki. Now, every fan of Roman history who also happens to be a fan of Tolkien's work, and I think there are many who have both these interests, will have noticed a fascinating similarity between Anor and Gondor on the one hand and the Western and Eastern Roman Empire on the other. In our timeline, of course, the Roman Empire was not established by the survivors of Atlantis. However, according to Roman legend, the survivors of the destruction of Troy, led by the Trojan hero Aeneas, after a long journey, arrived in Italy at the location where Rome would later be founded. So even though it was not a continent that was destroyed from which the ancestors of the Romans fled, there is a certain similarity with the destruction of Troy in which we could see some resemblance of Numenor. Rome was founded later and over hundreds of years this city would conquer large parts of the known world and would create a mighty empire by superior discipline and technology. Now, about 1150 years after the founding of the capital city Rome, this empire would split in two parts, a western and an eastern one. The western part, through a combination of many civil wars and conflict from within, and due to pressure from constant attacks by external enemies, would fall in the course of about 80 years. We remember how the northwestern empire of Anor also fell due to very similar reasons. The Eastern Roman Empire survived for almost another thousand years and fought constantly against enemies from all sides. From the West, the North, the East and the Southeast, this empire was surrounded and attacked by enemies, yet still, even so, it survived many attacks and many sieges, and like the mighty fortress city of Minas Tirith, this empire had a powerful city, a veritable fortress that could not be captured even though many an enemy would try. Minas Tirith was also similarly to Constantinople, strategically placed such as to be only attackable from one side, with multiple layers of walls protecting it, and thus could withstand many a siege without falling. Yet the empire, under constant attack, would shrink a lot and would enter a long period of decline. Many lands were lost, especially to the enemies from the southeast, and thus, 900 years after the Western Empire had fallen, the Eastern Empire was only a shadow of its former self, facing an enemy from the east that far outnumbered this dying empire. Of course, we know that Tolkien didn't like allegories, so even though we can always find some similarities, it is clear that we shouldn't compare everything one to one. Yet, the similarity with which Anor and the Western Roman Empire fell are quite interesting. And so is the similarity between Minas Tirith and Constantinople, and between the long decline of the Eastern Roman Empire and Gondor. Sure, there are also many differences, of course, the main one is clearly the fantastical elements of Tolkien's world, powerful beings that could employ magic and other fantastical devices, such as the Palantiri, the Seeing Stones, the Silmarils, the legendary jewels of Feanor, or the Rings of Power. But Tolkien himself was fascinated by the history of our own world, and in parts inspired by it certainly because his legendarium was conceived as a mythology for England, where the Shire actually represents a part of the English countryside where Tolkien grew up. In one of his letters to Milton Waldman, letter number 131, Tolkien writes, In the south, Gondor rises to a peak of power, almost reflecting Numenor, and then fades slowly to decayed Middle Age, a kind of proud, venerable, but increasingly impotent Byzantium. He makes some other historical references in other letters, and in fact we could certainly find many more similarities between our own history with the Western and Eastern Roman Empires and Tolkien's world. For example, during the crisis of the 3rd century, the Roman Empire split into multiple empires, similar to what happened with Anor. 
Contrary to Arnor, however, the Empire was reunited by the legendary Aurelian. Or how Rohan became allies of Gondor. The Rohirrim actually settled within the borders of Gondor, but instead of fighting them, they were made allies of the Gondorian Empire, a concept that we all know too well, where the Romans tried to do the same with the Germanic invaders with wildly varying degree of success. The Goths, for example, were sometimes the most loyal allies, but sometimes would also be the most brutal and formidable enemies of Rome. Or the Franks. For long years the trusted allies of the empire, but in the later years an aggressive expansionistic force. In Tolkien's world, with the Rohirrim, which were most likely based on the Goths, the principle of foederati worked a lot better and indeed it was then in the very end the Rohirrim that saved the Gondorians from certain doom at the battle of the Pelennor fields. In many ways actually, the world of Middle-earth is a version of the Roman Empire with magic, in which the Eastern Roman Empire is saved from certain doom in the last minute, with aid from many expected but also unexpected allies. Without the help from Rohan and the army of the dead, Gondor would have fallen, the same way that Constantinople fell in 1453 to the overwhelming armies of the Ottomans. In our timeline, this would have been akin to large armies from Western Europe coming to the aid of Constantinople in 1453, saving it from certain doom against an overwhelming enemy. Constantinople did receive some help, but far too little and too late as to have made a difference against the far larger armies of the Ottomans. Thus Tolkien's work can be seen as a happy end for the Eastern Roman Empire in which it is restored to its former glory with the help of allied forces. Now of course we shouldn't derive from this that the Ottomans were the analogy to Sauron's huge orc armies, because as I said, there are similarities but also big differences. At some point historical analogy ends and fantastical elements begin, so we cannot compare everything one to one. And as far as I know Mehmet the second was not a dark lord. But overall we see it is quite fascinating that there are indeed so many similarities between Arnor and Gondor and the Western and Eastern Roman Empires. Can you think of more similarities? For this is by no means a complete list. Let me know in the comment section. And if you are interested in why exactly the Eastern Roman Empire survived for so much longer than the Western half, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in the city of Constantinople itself, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history and of the works of Tolkien, gratias amici imperi romani and bene valete.